Hey there, my name is Darian Hart, and uh, as if you're probably here, then you've probably been reading up on my Bahamas website. Um, so for the last semester, in uh, one of my classes, I've been researching the Bahamas, and that's I've been compiling it all on this website. I'm finishing up the semester now, so in order to you know conclude the semester, I felt it would be appropriate to you know finally reveal my face and show myself talking for once on probably what I think is the most interesting portion of the Bahamas, which is the culture of food. So, um, I'm just going to put a disclaimer out now that if I don't explicitly say it's my idea, it's probably quoted from one of the many articles I read, which will be cited along as I go, as well as right below the video. So, yeah, don't get me for copyright, please. A lot of this probably isn't my idea, unless, like I said, it's I say it's my opinion. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So let's begin with the basic seafood culture. Obviously, the Bahamas is surrounded by an ocean, so it's only natural that they would have a lot of seafood. Uh, some of the biggest dishes, well, most popular, I shouldn't say biggest, most popular, uh, would be conch, which is, it's spelled like the word conch, but it's pronounced like conch. Uh, it's very similar to, like, oysters here in America, in that uh, the way they can prepare it vary in different ways, such as uh, deep frying it, steaming it, chowder, and fritters. And I actually remember conch fritters. We'll come back to those in a minute. Uh, I found a good recipe for them, for those of you who are interested. Or maybe traveling to the Bahamas. Maybe that's why you're on my site. Lucky. I'm in college. I can't travel. Yeah. Um, so some other things that they have are steamed fish. Uh, or, I'm sorry, stewed fish with uh, various vegetables such as tomatoes, onions, and uh, celery. It uh, sounds... Pretty delicious, I'm not going to lie. Uh, another thing the Bahamas is known for is their tropical drinks, both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. The most popular is Kalik, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's a light, kind of weedy beer, as Americans describe it. Um, another very popular drink is, it's just a, it's kind of just called the refresher. It's coconut water, not coconut milk. It's coconut water mixed with regular milk. And then a little bit of gin thrown in. It's uh, kind of how they refresh in during the hot days, you know, in the Bahamas, because it's very similar to where I live in Arizona, only it's not as deserty there. It's a little nicer, I would imagine. Um, and the last one is called a switcher. It's uh, kind of it's a lime citrusy drink. It's non-alcoholic, but it's uh, a bunch of people have done reviews online about it, and it uh, they've said there's nothing like it anywhere else that they can find. So all of that comes from, you know, there will be articles down there describing all of what I'm saying right now, because this is not my opinion, this is everything that I understand, that I've read and understand. Again, just to reiterate, I don't want to get copyrighted. Okay, move on to the next section. So now we unfortunately move on into the not-so-amazing fast food portion of the Bahamas culture. In recent years, um, actually throughout all of history, but more prominently in recent years, American and Jamaican culture have taken an influence in the Bahamas. This uh, has led to American fast food restaurants setting up in the Bahamas. It's great, you know, they get fast food. But, uh, you know, it's some of the older generation who still enjoy the basic Bahamas cuisine disagree with the American fast food being there. As a matter of fact, I was just curious what was there, and I went on a basic Google search of fast food restaurants in the Bahamas. And the top three results I got were Wendy's, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and lo and behold, McDonald's. So, a lot of the more common uh, Bahaman teens now like to go to these restaurants as opposed to the traditional Bahaman culture. And a lot of the older generation is afraid that this will eventually skew the culture and that this, these new restaurants will cause the, the new generation to lose its older practices at, in making food and stuff like that. So, again, there's a link to the, in the description for the article about this. All right, now we're going to move on to the recipe for conch fritters. Hey.
So now we're going to move on to the religious food served in the Bahamas uh, on special occasions and such. Because the Bahamas is majority Christian, which results from uh, loyalists of the English of the original English colonies leaving America after they won the Revolutionary War, they ended up the uh, loyalists ended up moving some of them to the Bahamas and bringing their Christian faith with them. And only logically, they would also bring a lot of their Christian religious food with them and the recipes. So some of the more uh, common ones that I was able to find are hot are they're called hot cross buns on Good Friday. And apparently they are a um, cinnamon spice and raisin uh, kind of basic buns with some powdered sugar icing on top of them in the shape of crosses. Uh, this actually spurs, the, the website that I read actually says this spurs from uh, the British, uh, or Great Britain in 1600. And that some of the, and that the recipe for this is still actually being used in Britain and Australia today, uh, almost identically. So that, I found that to be very interesting that this same food has not changed over the course of, you know, 400 years. Pretty cool that it's lasted that long. Um, another kind of popular one on Good Friday is uh, fish. Now, in America, if you're Christian, clearly you know about having fish on Good Friday. So, Bahamas, it's no different. The only difference is the various types of fish that the Bahamas have. Like I mentioned before, they're surrounded by an ocean. It's only logical, they have a whole ton of fish, a whole array of fish to choose from. Uh, some of the most common ones served on Good Friday are uh, gropers, wahoos, and yellowtails. And they can be served in various different ways, whether that be breaded and fried, or baked, or uh, stewed, or boiled which a uh, boiling fish is actually a very common one in the Bahamas. Uh, but uh, another thing uh, that's, that's common, it's not on Good Friday, it's on Easter, is that they have a, a big uh, ham. Because Easter ends Lent, and a lot of people can have meat. Um, so it's very common that on Easter Day, a lot of families get together. They have big ham, they have macaroni and cheese, they have... Um, so they have peas, rice, potato salad, so many other things. It's basically like a second Thanksgiving for them. And uh, kind of jealous, not going to lie. So, yeah, those are just some of the basic religious foods. Um, it's not very different than most Christian culture here in America today. But they have their own kind of twist on it. So, yeah, there's, an art there's a link to the article in the description. And now... We're going to move on to the next section. Now we're going to talk about the uh, where the Bahamas gets all their food. Uh, surprising enough, the island is actually able to sustain itself, but has very little to export as a result. Um, as of a few years ago, there are uh, over 1,700 farms registered uh, that export crops and stuff, basic farms. And then there's over 8,000 fishermen, or fisheries. And so as a result, those between all of those, they're able to produce enough food to sustain the Bahamas. Um, there's very little that exports, some exports, very little imports as well. Um, like I said, a majority of it is they're just self-sustaining. Um, there's uh, most, of, most of what people, most of what the fishermen and the farmers grow goes to their local markets and they sell them there as opposed to uh, big stores. Uh, those are not as common in the Bahamas as they are in America. So a lot of them daily will go out fishing or will harvest crops and that all goes out to the local market and everybody shops whenever. Um, it's a really good setup, it sounds like. Uh, their main focus is uh, to be able to produce, provide enough food for the people on their islands. And then tourists and exports come after that. So as long as they're able to support themselves, they're not worried about producing anything extra. Um, so, yeah, it's a very, very kind of reclused system, but it's been keeping the Bahamas alive for over 500 years. So it's an interesting, interesting setup. And, uh, I think it's really cool how they're able to become self-sustaining because even America is not like that. So yeah.
thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, I thought this was a great way to end my semester, my final project, by culminating it all and uh, doing the best part, like I said, in an actual video. So uh, I, I will be checking up on this website even after the class. Just if anybody has questions or wants more information, I can you know direct you to where I got certain things. If maybe I didn't, you can't a link's dead or something. Uh, just let me know. It's been so fun this semester searching up the Bahamas. It's been a pain at times finding information, but it's been fun overall. I'm glad you watched this video. All right, thank you. Bye.